So when it comes to hard surface modeling, Blender has a lot of different topology hacks that you can use and many that you probably don't even know about. So in this video, I'm going to show you them. Now some of these are from our Topology Handbook 2.0 product. It's a free one, you can get it on our site, and uh, we show a bunch of different topology tips and tricks for hard surface. I'll link that in the description if you're interested. So I'm going to show you the main ones that I think are the most interesting here in Blender. So let's take a sphere here, okay? And what we're going to need for this one is the Machine Tools add-on, which is a free add-on. You can get it on Gumroad or on uh, Blender Market, but it is free. So basically what you want to do once you've installed the Machine Tools add-on is you want to search for it in the preferences here, okay? Machine Tools. And what you're going to need to do is turn on some of these settings. Now some of these I don't even have turned on, but the main ones you're going to want to use here are the Smart Vert, Edge, Face, the Cleanup Tool. I also use Focus. And um, I'm also going to turn on surface slag because we're going to be discussing that here shortly. And that's all you really need turned on for right now, as I think so. Uh, there might be more, but I'll let you know as we get through this. But basically, what we can do here is now that we have those enabled, we can press the one key, which will merge all the vertices at the last selected vertex. It's basically M and then merge at last. So say I had all these different vertices here selected, right? and I wanted to merge it here. That's the last selected one. I press the one key and they all merge to that one. Now in the same way, I can press shift one and that will merge to the center of all of these, okay? So pretty cool stuff. It's gonna kind of average at the distance of all of these and merge right at the center. It's basically the same as pressing M in the merge at center, but it's easier because you just have to press shift one and you're done. Now the next option we have is the surface slide option. Now if I were to take this vertex and move it, Notice it kind of moves into the sphere. You see what I mean? It kind of pokes a hole into it almost. It moves inside of it. Now if I press tab and turn on surface slide, now what it's going to do is slide along the surface, which is really, really cool. If you want to, you know, slide it along that curvature in this case of the sphere. And you can always turn this off when you're done. Now the next option we have is the, um, is the cleanup tool. And I'm going to show you some examples of how you could use this. So say I have you know some stray vertices kind of hanging out or maybe I have like duplicate you know faces in certain areas kind of like this with machine tools that you can do is you can press the three key on the keyboard and it's going to clean all of that junk up you're going to see um, that duplicate face is now gone so if I press three it's gone and so are those floating vertices and basically you can kind of change which uh, areas you want affected and which areas you don't want affected through these menus but I usually leave all of these here on default now the next option we have here comes from the mesh machine add-on and this is probably one of the most powerful hard surface modeling add-ons you can get besides hard ops and box cutter so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut in a hole and I made some recent videos on this, by the way, if you want to watch those, just scroll through my channel. But basically what we can do here is we can use the Boolean cleanup option to kind of quickly merge these vertices together. So you can kind of see there's some redundant vertices we could quickly merge. So the way we do that is we can select all these vertices around here. And a really easy way to do that is with Mesh Machine, select an edge and then Alt-click that same edge. It'll select around for you through the N-Gons even. And if we press the Y key, we can choose Boolean Cleanup. And if I scroll up, it's going to affect the inside edges. And if I scroll up again, it's going to affect the outside ones. And I want to affect the outside ones in this case. And you're going to see all of the near-miss vertices will now be merged together. And speaking of this, for any uh, anybody new to the channel, I'll show you real quick the offset cut feature. Most of you know about this. I've shown it many times in videos. But say I wanted to add in a bevel. The issue with this is the bevel is going to eventually overlap with the surrounding geometry. See what I mean? So what we can actually do is we can press the Y key and make a buffer using offset cut. And this would basically eat the surrounding geometry and give us, a, um, give us more buffer to actually add in that bevel. You see what I mean? So very, very powerful feature. I have plenty of videos on offset cut if you want to watch those. Now another cool feature we have here is called the, um, I don't even know what it's called to be honest, but I'll show you how it works. So say we have some random inconsistent, you know, edges kind of going like this. And I want to add in a loop cut. What it's going to do when I add in the loop cut is it's going to conform 
to the edge on the top and as I move it down it's going to conform more to the edge on the bottom but it's never going to be exactly that shape until it's either in the same spot as either of them you see what I mean it's going to kind of be an average in the middle more or less so what I can actually do if I double tap G I can press the E key that will align it to the bottom and pressing um, the F key will actually flip it if I want to align it to the top instead so once again E is going to align it and F is going to flip it from the bottom set or the uh, top set here. So pretty cool stuff. Now another trick that a lot of people don't, um, don't really know exists or how it works is the uh, loop cut feature in the bevel. So say I added in a cut, I'll make this like, let's make it high resolution because why not? Then we'll add in a cut here and we'll sharpen this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to control click on sharpen that will apply the boolean. Now check this out. If I, you know, alt click this um these edges here and I want to bevel it, they quickly apply the scale. I can bevel it like this. But you're going to kind of see right here it uh, kind of starts overlapping from this edge in the uh, in the corner. So basically what I can do is I can turn off this loop slide feature and what this does is it basically chooses which um, edges are going to be affected? Is it going to be the edge on the outside that's moving or the edges here on the inside that are moving? So if I turn that off, you're going to see it slides this one instead, which is exactly what we want. It gets us that really clean shading and we don't have any overlaps that uh, we have before. Now, in this case, it would probably be a much better idea to actually connect these perpendicular. It's going to be a much better solution that way. Um, but I just wanted to show you, sometimes you'll have situations where you simply need to uh, turn on or off that loop slide feature. In this case, you can really see the difference there. It starts overlapping pretty quickly if you don't have this turned off. Now this is another one that I use quite frequently, especially when I'm doing like weird sub D type of shapes. So I'm going to quickly make one. I'm going to go ahead and bisect and modifier. And then I'm just going to randomly extrude some stuff. Just for fun. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop a sub D on it, and then maybe we could, I don't know, extrude this kind of down this way. Now let's say I wanted to, you know, fill these areas into a quad. Right now we only have three vertices. What I can do is I can press the 4 key, and with machine tools enabled, that'll naturally add in that extra vertex that you need. Then you can slide it over if you need to. Press the, um, let me apply the mirror here. Go to that and then you know I could obviously slide this over, symmetrize it or whatever and now you're going to have that really clean effect. And you could kind of do the same thing for example on you know a sphere or even a cylinder. Say you had some missing faces, right? It's going to be kind of hard to fill these in while maintaining that curvature. Even if I press the F key it's not going to have that curvature that we need. So instead I can just press the 4 key and it's going to automatically know which um, areas to fill in while maintaining that curvature. So really, really cool stuff and something I definitely recommend using. Now the final one is really, really cool. I use this a lot. So let's say I had a, uh, a cylinder here and I wanted to make this a bit lower, like 32 vertices, okay? What I'm gonna do is cut in, maybe run an inset, we'll press the I key and the T key. So say I did something like this and then I applied the Boolean. So right now you're going to see that this area is currently made up of n guns. you see that? So if I wanted to run like a sub D, it's probably not going to subdivide very well. Even if I added in like creases or anything, this area is not going to subdivide well. So what you can actually do, check this out. What we could do is, um, let me quickly merge this here and then merge that there. Same for this side. So what a lot of people would do is they'd come in here and they just press the J key and just fill these all in manually to make them quads. But there's actually a much easier way to do this. Now the requirement here is that you have a one-to-one -one correspondence between vertices. And what I mean by that is every single vertex is matched with another one across from it. You can't have like a an extra one here. They have to be a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence. Kind of reminds me of bijective functions and um, isomorphisms in mathematics for any math nerds out there. Uh, speaking of, I'm going off topic here. Did you guys know that a coffee cup and a donut are topologically the same? You can look up some videos on that if you're curious. 
Uh, anyways, um, if as long as these vertices have a one-to-one -one correspondence, we can press Control T, and then that's going to triangulate them. And then Alt J is going to untriangulate them, turn them into quads. So instead of you know joining all these together manually, it's going to take a while. Control T, Alt J, done. And same for up here, just going to need to quickly merge these over. We we'll use machine tools for that. Once again, Control T, Alt J, Control T, Alt J. And now you have an area that's going to subdivide very, very nicely. So that's it. Just a quick little video on some uh, topics that I think are really important when it comes to hard surface and how you can use different topology tools to make your workflow even quicker. And like I said, a lot of these come from our new topology handbook 2.0. You can grab that for free on our website if you want to learn even more cool stuff like this. So that's it for this video. Thanks a bunch for watching and I'll see you in the next one.